Okay, we are going to talk about the foot. You have to take notice that this is the dorsum. Okay, we have the tendon of extensor hallucis longus muscle and uh, the dorsalis pedis artery, the red one. It is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery, the red one in here, okay? We have also the arcuate artery. This is, it's, it's like much of an arch right here. So this is the arcuate artery. Now, going to the uh, medial malleolar region, okay? Flick, this is the tendon of Achilles, okay? This is the flexor retinaculum. Here we have the medial malleolus, okay? Now, the tibialis posterior tendon is right here, this one. We can differentiate it from the uh, flexor digitorum longus tendon is that when we go there, okay, we can see that it goes to the digits, okay? So here we have the flexor digitorum longus tendon, and here we have the tibialis anterior tendon, okay? Uh, concerning the posterior tibial artery, and vein. The vein is not obvious here, okay? So this is the uh, posterior tibial artery along with the uh, vein, uh, along with the nerve, tibial nerve. And we can see it with the going to the uh, medial and the uh, lateral plantar branches, okay? And flexor hallucis longus tendon, this one. Okay, now we are going to talk about the popliteal fossa. We have to note the borders. Uh, we can uh, see inferiorly, we have the gastrocnemius muscle. Here we can see the biceps femoris. And right here we can see the semimembranous is the deep one, and the semitendinous is the most superficial. So again, gastrocnemius, biceps, semitendinous, and then we will have semimembranous. Going to, uh, this is the popliteal artery. The vein is not actually obvious, okay? So this is the popliteal artery and we have the tibial nerve. Okay, we can see that this is the sciatic nerve. It gives me the popliteal nerve and again, it gives us again the fibular or what we call the common peroneal nerve. Okay, so this is the common peroneal and here we have the tibial nerve. We are going to talk about the abdomen and pelvis. This is the abdominal aorta. First of all, we have the celiac trunk, and we'll have the superior mesenteric and the posterior, uh, the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, uh, here we can see the renal artery going, this one going to the vein, and the suprarenal artery going right over here. Okay, so this is the renal, and this is the suprarenal. We have uh, the gonadal arteries and veins. Okay, we can see that it is uh, going to be testicular if we are talking about male and ovarian if we are talking about a female. Okay, we have again here the lumbar arteries and veins. Okay, here is the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta. Uh, we can see here the right, the okay, the right and the left uh, common iliac arteries and. Here we can see the right and left external iliac arteries. And here we can see the right internal iliac artery. Okay. This is the inferior vena cava. Okay. We can also see the inguinal ligament. Here we have the lacuna musculorum. And here we can see the lacuna vasculorum. And you can see here the ureter. And you can also notice it in here, okay? So this is the ureter. Okay, now we are going to talk about the femoral triangle. Uh, we have to review the borders. Uh, notice that the superior border of the femoral triangle is the inguinal ligament. We can see the lateral border, which is the sartorius. And we can see the medial border, which is the adductor longus. Now, this is the femoral artery, and this is the femoral vein, which gives us the great saphenous vein. It is, we must note that the great saphenous vein is a, super, is a superficial vein, okay? 
we can see the uh, superficial inguinal lymph nodes okay and here we can see the saphenous opening right over here okay uh, femoral vein is not actually here but you can note that it is lateral to the femoral uh, artery okay now this is the spermatic cord going over here and we can see that this is the ductus difference Okay, now we are going to talk about the superior mediastinum. Here we can note the left and right internal jugular veins. Here are the, this is the left and right subclavian veins. These join to give me the brachiocephalic veins, okay? This is the inferior thyroid uh, vein, and these all join and drain into the superior vena cava. You can note here the arch of aorta, okay? This is the brachiocephalic trunk, which gives us the common carotid and the subclavian arteries, okay? Now, uh, here we have the left common carotid, and again, we have the left subclavian. Here we have the trachea and the esophagus. Okay, we can note that this is the thoracic aorta, and this is the abdominal aorta, and this is the opening of the diaphragm. Through it comes the inferior vena cava, along with other structures. Okay, here we have the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta, and this is the inferior vena cava. We can note that the opening of the diaphragm happens at the level of T8, the esophagus, okay, comes at the level of T10 and the aorta comes out of the diaphragm at the level of T12. Okay, now we're going to talk about the axilla and the cubital fossa. First of all, we're going to talk about the axilla. This is the axillary artery. Uh, now, just focus in here, okay? These, we are going to talk about the cords of the brachial plexus. This one is the posterior, and here we can see the medial and here we can see the lateral, okay? Now, in here, these three things, okay? You can see it, it looks like a fork, so that's why they call it the fork of the median nerve, okay? Medial and lateral roots, we can see it, I already mentioned it. Now, uh, here we can see the brachial artery. Now, I think this model is wrong because the, media, the brachial artery should bifurcate at the head of the radius okay but you c the doctor mentioned that this is only for variation reasons we can have it bifurcate at different regions at different areas okay but you can you must know that this is this this is where it should bifurcate okay now concerning the cubital fossa we can see that this is the tendon of the biceps brachii they removed it okay we can see the brachial artery as i already mentioned this is a median nerve okay now, we should note the radial nerve, I think, this is the radial nerve. That's it. Okay, now we're going to talk about the wrist and hand, okay? Uh, the removed part over here is the flexor retinaculum, okay? We can see this is the tendon of flexor carpi radialis, and here we can see the radial artery. We can note the median nerve isn't actually here, but I think it goes somewhere in the tendon or something. Okay, the ulnar artery nerve. Uh, <coughs> sorry, the ulnar artery. You can see it in it's it's red, and the uh, the ulnar nerve. It's just beneath it. Okay, uh, this is the superficial palmar arch. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the neck and face. You can note here that this is the. Uh, common carotid or, or carotid triangle okay the borders are this is the lateral border which is the sternocleidomastoid and the superior border is the posterior belly of the digastric muscle and here we can see the omohyoid muscle this is the medial border okay here we have the thyrocervical trunk okay it gives us these three things this is where the uh, common carotid bifurcates and gives us the internal carotid artery and this is the external carotid artery a superior thyroid artery 
and this is the internal laryngeal artery. Uh, uh, here we have the, okay, hold on. This is the lingual. It's really not obvious. The stem is really short, but this is the lingual artery. Okay. Now the facial artery, okay, we must follow it. It goes all the way to the base of the nose, somewhere around the eyes. Okay, now the vagus nerve and the internal jugular vein are not really obvious in here, okay? It, it, you know, this, this is where the internal jugular vein enters, but the vagus nerve is not obvious, okay? Uh, we have the superficial uh, temporal artery. So this is the superficial temporal, temporal artery. And here we have the occipital. It goes from here all the way here. Okay. Now, uh, the external jugular vein. Here is the external jugular vein. And the anterior jugular vein is not obvious here. Okay. The subclavian triangle, this is the subclavian triangle, and it's called like that because at the medial uh, angle, we, can ha we have the subclavian uh, vein going around there, okay? Now, this is the scalinus anterior, and this is the mediascalinus, okay? And we know the scalinus anterior because we have the phrenic nerve going above it, okay? Uh, now this is the subclavian. This is the subclavian vein, and this is the subclavian artery. Okay. Now this is the brachial plexus. Okay. Here we have the external jugular vein. Here we have the internal jugular vein. Here we have the anterior jugular vein.